The comedy team from the D generation has been tickling our funny bones since the mid 80s. Their current production for the ABC, The Late Show, is in its second season and brightening up late night Saturdays. When TV TV wanted someone to look behind the scenes of The Late Show, I was more than happy to oblige. <laughs> This is how topical we are. This is the intro of this week's show. It's, it's seven words written down on a piece of paper at this stage. The words are Samazan, Villachez, Crikey, Ortman, uh, Navy. We must be doing something about the Navy. Don't forget Simon Le Bon. <laughs> Everyone Simon else Le bon. has, but pure gold. Mm. So that's how topical. It's not, that's, as, that's as much as we've written for the intro. And we're two hours away. And probably about 600 words short. Sure. So it'll get there. Now We've got a big show tonight. We'll be talking to uh, Bruce Samerson's hairdresser and saying, <laughs> What the hell do you think you're playing at? <laughs> Explain yourself, sir. Have a look at this. We've got some pictures. What the hell? Does he really think that looks good? I mean, it looks like Mo from the Three Stooges. <laughs> Nowhere else in the world do eight people write and perform 50 minutes of live comedy <laughs> every week. The D generation have the final say, and unlike other shows, are answerable only to themselves. The fun of it is writing it, and then the payoff is getting to say it yourself. And there's less chance of it going wrong if you write it, and then if you Minimal write it all yourself. Experience. You can kind of be answerable to the end product, really, when you're in control of both ends of the... the you don't have to go and explain it to Gordon Chater or someone else. You just, you've done it yourself and say... So. Don't we? Damn, I've been doing that. Well, she's out of sight by then. Yeah. Second. No, 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 no. You'll only take a second. Only take a second. It's an right. anniversary. So, Jace, let, let Rolf do his line. Only take a second. That's what they said when they began. Chip, okay. chip. So what happens when a joke goes down like a lead balloon? Yeah. You just cry you on the spot. You want to kill yourself. That's the best way to do it. I guess you just sort of admit that it's died, really. Well, I think I can speak from experience here, because uh, I'm mean, i I'm involved in Graham and the Colonel every week. But uh, what you do when you die is you, you, you go straight for the big prop. <laughs> Just pull out a big prop. The Olympic decision is only two weeks away. That's right. That's now, right. Colonel. Mm -hmm. yes. Colonel, summarise <laughs> Sydney's chances. Jeez, we resort to cheap stunts. <laughs> People actually enjoy the moments on this show where jokes don't work because I think half the attraction is right there. Let's see how they get out of this one. Yeah. <laughs> a new addition to The Late Show is stand-up comedian Judith Lucy. She's the first person to be initiated into the team for more than four years. Mick Malloy explains why Judith was an obvious think, uh, choice. We saw Judith performing and straight away were taken by her and just thought she was so similar in style and in, in, in her, the topics she chose. She was just so similar, it just seemed like such an obvious inclusion for a group that was already probably top-heavy with, with men, you know. But Judith's sense of humour is proving not to be everybody's cup of tea. Something else I've become a bit obsessed with since, you know, I'm, I'm on the telly is, of course, feedback, which is why I never like to miss an episode of Back Chat, and I was particularly thrilled with this episode. What seems to have set in with the hiring of that repellent feminist whose idea of... I got my first really bad review when I was in Adelaide and was just referred to as simply awful. And I just figure nothing can touch me since then. I really don't care what people say. The Late Show's popularity has reached cult status. Celebrities know when they've made it when they've been parodied by the D-Gen. At this stage of the program, though, it's so well known and I believe so well accepted that people in the public eye who might previously have taken offence or taken action now accept that they're sort of part of the gag, so they're more inclined, fingers crossed, to, uh, to wear it, and indeed to be part of it sometimes. Sure, when the girls first started out, they copped a lot of criticism. People said they couldn't sing, they couldn't dance, but with love connection, they finally proved you don't need those things. Baby, come Eager hordes of fans who queue up every Saturday night to be a part of the studio audience are another testament to the show's success. Tickets are like gold and are booked out months in advance. Performing live comedy gives them an edge also in the battle for viewers. People come to or watch our show and for the same reason they go to see car racing because there's a very real <laughs> chance they're going to see an accident. Uh, look at that. Yes, Arafat's hat's there. Look at that. Look at that. Unbelievable. He's an inspiration, isn't he? Yes. If I was to confide in the audience, I'd say that felt like a great idea on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I think that's part of the attraction.